Hello and welcome to Elect2Go. We're in the workshop right now. Um, we've got a couple of pages we can send to customers with instructions on how to do soldering. Don't forget we do offer a soldering service ourselves and we can do that and all our soldering is guaranteed. All the work is actually done here in Australia by our technicians here. Um, so we've been perfecting this method for years and we're pretty confident that we're not going to have any problems. So we're going to share a few tips with you today. So first of all, if you really are attempting to do the soldering yourself and you want to put the welders, connect the, um, put the connections on, you do need some basic tools. Obviously a soldering iron, absolute must have. Do get it with a cradle or create some kind of cradle or, or fireproof rest because you're going to be lifting it up, putting it down quite a lot. You are also going to need a heat shrink. We've got a little heat gun here. It blows out a heat shrink gun, sorry, it blows out hot air. And that little piece of shrink tube there will shrink under that hot air. I think you can sometimes get away with, say, a really hot hair dryer if you're desperate, but those little ones have the fantastic little small nozzle. You're never going to find that on a hair dryer, so best if you can get the right thing. Okay, number of cutters you're going to need cutters and strippers and all kinds of things. So, basic pliers, they need to be sharp. As soon as they get dull, get rid of them, sharpen them or whatever you need to do, but they have to be sharp. Um, st wire strippers, We've tried some different types over the years. You've got a number of layers to strip back, so you're going to need strippers that are capable of being adjusted, and ones that really grip it hard, so there's no tugging, stretching, and and you know, wrenching on the wire. So you see that one lovely clean strip there in one one move, perfect stripper. Okay, um, as well as those items, this is an absolute must. Um, it's really hard, it's really fiddly and difficult to do this without these little claws. So this is called a helping hand. You'll find it everywhere, most electronic stores. Um, so it will grip the wire and it can also grip the connector piece on this side. You'll see we've actually put some protective coating on there. Um, that's so that we don't dent the wire and damage it. Okay, so I think if that's all, we can get started. Okay, now we're going to show you a different technique if you haven't got the copper tape. Um, this one works as well. Alright, so same tools as last time. Give that a good strip. Strip off the vinyl from that. You need to leave a little bit of an extra piece than this one compared to the last technique. So sometimes this kind of connection doesn't look quite so pretty. But it's a, it, it does work. It works for some people better than others. So we've taken off the vinyl coating, we've moved the two thin wires far away, so they're about one and a half to two centimetres long, and then we've snipped the end off the core wire, made it very short and very manageable, slide the wide hot shrink tubing over, and put that in the jaws of the helping hand. You'll see the technician keeps on moving those fine wires away need to keep them away until they're actually required. Um, the connector part. So we're going to put on that piece of shrink tube. Can I just show that tiny piece of shrink tube? We've put that on first, obviously, because you're going to slide that over the joint in the end. Just be really careful. When you're first starting out, you might want to split these wires a little bit more and push that shrink tube further down, simply because if you're slow with the soldering, the heat will get to that small piece of shrink tube and it's going to shrink and be useless. So. I think he's already stripped the phosphor off that. Yeah, he did it so quick I didn't notice. So the phosphor's already been removed from that core wire. And a tiny blob of solder has gone on there. Okay, the connector wire. Again, a little bit of heat shrink has been slid on. Tiny touch solder. I'll just get you to pause for a minute. I'm just going to show you um, a little risk with this. The shrink tube there, you can see it's very close to the solder. Now if you're slow with soldering, do keep that shrink tube further away. So you may need to separate that wire first of all. Um, also if that soldering lump, it's nice and neat here, but if it was lumpy and big, and you really wouldn't be able to get that shrink tube on. Okay. So we'll shrink that down with the hot air. Now we're left with these two wires, two fine wires. Alright, so you see those tiny little radial wires are quite long compared to the other technique they are. And that's so that we've got plenty of space to kind of fold them up and allow for a little slack. If it wasn't done this way, if there was any tugging on that EO wire at the join, 
those tiny little wires would get tugged and break the connection and your wire won't joint won't work anymore. You see that little fold, that little S bend that's done there. Okay, so this is semi-complete, so before we finish it off, we're just gonna test it. Making the right noise. The yeah, wire is lining up. We're just having a little bit of a squeeze and wiggle. Make sure there's been no tugging, stretching and stretching with that wire. Looks good. Okay. Okay, so the final kind of shrink tube, the final sleeve goes on. A little bit of heat. Okay, testing again. Strong enough to hold that. Perfect.